Good evening, and um, welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, my name is Carlos Sr. I'm the lead pastor of New Hope uh, St. Pete, and uh, so glad to have you join us tonight. Uh, this evening, I want to do something a little bit different. Um, uh, we uh, had such a great time uh, in our uh, morning devotion. I want to share tonight uh, some of the, uh, uh, the thoughts from that uh, time of devotion. And, um, and maybe give us something tonight to think about, um, and certainly some things to consider. Our thought tonight comes from uh, the book of 1 John, chapter 5, uh, verses 6 through 12. Uh, but in particular, uh, I want to focus on um, two verses, uh, 11 and 12. And verses 11 and 12 say this, um, and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. The one who has the Son has the life. The one who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that, uh, that I know that I tend to do sometimes is I tend to, uh, to maybe... Uh, to complicate things, maybe sometimes even overcomplicate uh, them. Uh, it is often born out of my need uh, to bring a nuanced approach uh, to the problems and challenges and issues that I face. I think like many of you, uh, you we recognize um, over time uh, that the answers to many of the questions that we have are not always black and white. Uh, they are not always simple. I mean, it's important for us uh, to uh, to bring um, again, sort of a new nu a nuanced um, 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 sort of mindset and, and, and approach and consideration, uh, because we we want to be effective problem solvers. And um, but but there is sometimes the potential to maybe overcomplicate. Um, uh, the constructing of solutions uh, as we are uh, seeking to solve problems. And sometimes when we overcomplicate uh, that process, it, uh, it in fact becomes a way of avoiding uh, taking any real action. Um, and so uh, while we are analyzing, um, um, sometimes there's the paralysis of analysis so I want to talk tonight just a little bit about uh, maybe simplifying our approach, especially uh, as it relates to our approach uh, to how we pursue and how we perceive God. Um, I want to talk about how maybe a, a, a key area where you and I can show courage, uh, where we can be intentional, uh, an area uh, that can serve as um, a compass, uh, a north star, a guiding, a guidepost, uh, as we are working out our salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, John, <clears throat> and, and so, so before I, I talk about this particular text, I want to provide just a little bit of context. And so the writer of this letter, uh, John, uh, who was an apostle of Jesus, uh, one who in the scriptures is called the apostle whom Jesus loved in the gospels. Uh, John, uh, in, the, in the advanced age of his ministry, is writing to a particular uh, congregation, a locale, um, who have come to complicate uh, the message of the gospel. Uh, their have, their uh, community has been infiltrated by false teachers. And, um, and these false teachers have caused or created division within uh, that community by spreading incorrect uh, doctrine about Jesus's humanity and divinity. And so <clears throat> without an understanding, a clear understanding of uh, both Jesus's humanity and, um, and also his divinity, uh, that community is uh, in danger of diminishing uh, 
the saving work of the Lord Jesus and confusing the message of the gospel. And so it's in that context um, uh, that John is speaking and he spends uh, a significant portion of this letter addressing both the breadth, the depth, um, and the impact of the ministry of the Lord Jesus. And not only in terms of what Jesus comes to, to accomplish both as man and God, uh, but certainly the impact of what he has done in the lives of ordinary believers. Uh, he talks uh, throughout, uh, so throughout the letter, John talks about certain things like uh, how uh, the ministry of Christ has produced a sensitivity to sin in the life of the believer, um, how that sensitivity has led to a decreasing pattern of sin in the believer's life, um, how the believer through the ministry of Christ experiences answered prayer, um, the love or, or the, the formulation of healthy community as a result of uh, our connection um, and our bond, our, our shared bond with God through Jesus, um, a love for God's word, a love for wisdom and for truth. Uh, all of these things, uh, all of these things John talks about uh, as being sort of ancillary uh, benefit uh, and witness uh, of the ministry of the Lord Jesus uh, in the life of the believer. And so <clears throat> as John is uh is, is talking about all of these things. He comes, he arrives at this sort of uh, climactic moment uh, in verses 11 and 12. Uh, as he talks about, again, um, he's talking into a, con a context where, uh, where, 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 where the, 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 the false teachers that have infiltrated that community uh, have, have, in a sense, overcomplicated uh, something that God made very simple uh, through the ministry of the Lord uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, it is in that context where uh, John speaks, makes this statement uh, about belief. And this statement that he makes is, I mean, it is, it is, it is simple. Uh, it is clear. Uh, it is concise. Uh, but it is also decisive. He, he, he leaves no, um, no room for question. And this is the testimony, John says, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. The one who has the son has the life. The one who does not have the son of God does not have the life. And so as John is leading his um, sort of uh, doubting, uh, maybe even skeptical recipients uh, of this letter back to truth, he reminds them, he shows them the simplicity of the solution that God um, has provided for humanity. That through the Son, through the Son of God, God has provided a way out of sin. Uh, he's provided an avenue uh, for us to escape our brokenness. Uh, to find healing, to find peace, um, to rediscover a healthy community, a healthy mindset, a healthy sense of self, a healthy, healthy sense of others. And the simple, uh, uh, the simple truth uh, that John offers, right, in, in, in terms of the context of the gospel, that, uh, that whoever has Jesus through Jesus has now uh, been given access to life. Uh, he lets us know that this simple truth requires basically a simple response, and that is to trust the Son, to believe in the Son, uh, to put one's faith and trust uh, in both the completed work of the Lord Jesus, uh, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection for us, uh, but also to put our faith uh, in the supremacy of Jesus in all things, um, the life of God working in us and through us uh, as we do our work for the kingdom. Um, 
I think in a world that is, again, um, wrestling with some very complex um, and, again, <laughs> nuanced issues uh, and concerns, uh, it is very easy for us to get swept up into, into the complexity of those causes and, 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 and questions uh, and, and lose the sure footing that God has given us in the gospel. Um, and so I'm certainly not advocating against being thoughtful, uh, being um, a conscientious person, um, asking good questions, um, considering um, all of the various uh, uh, potentialities uh, of a situation, uh, being a critical thinker, right? All of these things, the Bible says, with all that getting, get understanding. Uh, but all I'm saying is that even as uh, you and I explore, uh, let us make sure uh, that our anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Um, that even as we survey the sea uh, and we study the waves, let's make sure that our footing uh, is sure uh, as we stand uh, on the ark of safety. Uh, God, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, and so with all that is going on around us, uh, with life's various vicissitudes, and, um, and alterations. It is a comfort to know uh, that God is, was, and will be available to us through the ministry of the Lord Jesus. And let me say one, let me say one additional thing. Um, one of the com complexities that we are sometimes confronted with, especially as it relates to faith, uh, is the pushback against exclusivist claims. Yeah, man, I, I don't do religion or I don't do Christianity or I don't do this or that um, because you know it's just impossible for any one, any one way to be the only way. And the only thing that I, I, you know, I, I would just say to you uh, to maybe consider this is that life has been the way that God has constructed life is that you and I can only travel one path at a time. And so the moment that a person chooses a particular path to walk, whether it is, uh, you know, our faith or some other faith or no faith at all, uh, you have already then at that point, um, made a claim, you made a choice or a claim um, that now has become exclusive for you. No one can walk more than one path at a time. And what John's argument is in this text to these believers, and, and certainly it is the conviction that I hold and, and it is, it is a, a journey that I want to encourage those who are in to continue and those who maybe are skeptical and looking from the outside in would invite you to um, is this journey with God through Christ. Um, it is not to say that it is always easy, not to say that there aren't challenges. I love uh, what my boy uh, 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 Lecrae says, when I got saved, God didn't make me any taller. You know, he didn't, uh, he, he didn't wipe away, uh, he didn't wipe out my debt uh, or, or, or cancel out all my trouble. But what he did do was he, he made me clean. Um, uh, he showed me the, the intrinsic value and worth that my life has. Um, that he, that, that you and I are image bearers made in the image of God. Uh, that when that image was marred, he loved us so, he loved us so much that he came from heaven to earth to rescue us and to ransom us uh, from the enemy. Um, and so, and so what I found in faith uh, are the things that I need to be able to show up every day um, in the spaces that I'm called to show up in and show up in the way that I need to. Um, that in him, I live and move and have my being. Uh, that because of him, um, I'm able to love 
with a love outside of myself, uh, to give uh, in a way uh, that goes beyond the depths uh, and limits of my own giving, but to be able to give out of the depths of God, uh, to be able to be present um, in a way for my family and, and for my friends uh, that I know that I wouldn't be able to be apart from him. And so again, uh, sometimes in a world that is filled with complexity, my friends, it's important for you and I um, to keep it simple. And with that, let me close with a word of prayer. God, again tonight, we are grateful for the ministry of the Lord Jesus. We are grateful, Father, that it is through him, again, that we live and move and have our being. That you supply all of our, our, our needs according to your riches and glory. So that we, in turn, are able to meet the needs of others. Tonight, God, we thank you that you are the God of all comfort. And so as we have received comfort from Christ, we are in turn are able to provide comfort for all of those that stand in need of comfort. We're grateful, God, that this is not a meritocracy, that what you have done for us and even what you continue to do for us is not earned, it's not deserved, but it is given out of the abundance of your grace and your care and your concern for your creation. Our prayer then, God, is that you would help us to walk worthy, to walk worthy of the love that you've shown, to walk worthy of the gifts that you have given and to be fully pleasing to you. Our prayer, God, is that our walk and our, our desire um, to be faithful is not born out of, out of some misguided need for acceptance. You have already accepted us. That it is not born out of some broken need uh, to feel loved. You have already loved us apart from our performance. But we pray, God, that as we work, as we work in the world, as we serve, as we live, as we love, that we would do all of those things out of the strength of the love that you've provided and that you continue to provide. That we know and sense that we are forgiven. That we know that we have been healed and that we are being healed. That we know we have worth and value. That we know that we have been made for good works that we have something to offer to the world that has worth and has value, that you've given us a voice, but then you've also given us ears to hear. And so God, thank you, Lord, that you've positioned us uniquely to have something to say that can add value, but also God to hear others so that they know that they too have value. We pray, God, be with us in this space. Be with us in this moment when there is such cataclysmic change happening all around us. And, and so much of uh, our systems and institutions are, are moving uh, in very dynamic ways. Our prayer, God, is that as the ground seems to be shifting underneath foot, that we would be settled, stable, established, rooted, and grounded in the work, the completed and ongoing work of the Lord Jesus in our lives. Lord, we love you. We bless you. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, we love you. We thank God for you. I pray that, uh, that this Bible study has been a blessing to you. If you're not already, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, follow us uh, on Facebook. And, um, and, um, and certainly, um, we look forward to partnering with you as we work to serve our community. Uh, God bless.